Guardian of Order. The current Sea Lord or Admiral of the High Elven Navy is Ashlyn, a noted tactician and warrior. Ashlyn has overseen a violent campaign to eradicate the Norskin threat through the use of the Lothern Sea Guard and Shadow Warriors alike. Before he became Sea Lord, he gained his reputation as an avid commander when he led a campaign against Marienburg, the port city state, in 2354. The Red Pirate of Marienburg, Otto Steinroth, led a mighty fleet to Ulthuan and laid waste to a city called Sardanoth. The wrath of the Sea Lord Ashland came soon. His ships were swift and could have easily overtaken the pirate at sea. Instead, he decided to teach the race of man a lesson that wouldn't be forgotten too quickly. He struck at Marienburg itself whenever the pirate's fleet docked, bringing an unnatural mist to shield his ships from the cannons of the city's walls. They fought their way through the city, retrieving the valuable treasures of their brethren's city. These actions were met with mixed reception in the courts of Othwan. Some were angered at the damaged trade relations between Marienburg and Othwan, but the Phoenix King, Finnebar, grew closer to him. In Ashland, the Sea Lord, he saw a rapacious warrior that the kingdom could not deny. Before we get into the game itself, let's meet a character that we'll be recruiting later on. He's a character made by our patron Asti, and his name is Lavendil. Lavendil is a noble from Illyrian, who has sworn his life to the Sea Lord after his ship was attacked by the Druki and the Sea Lord came to his aid. For his loyalty, Lavendil has lost all connections back at home. They will not allow him to inherit his family's estate as the austere commander is not popular in the political networks back in the courts of Wolthwan. Regardless, he stands as a mighty warrior besides Ashland, striking down any opponent who approaches him. It is now time for the journey of Sea Lord Ashland to begin. We're not here to conquer the entire world. No, we're here to take out strategic threats to Wolthwan. That means Norsemen, Druki, or Dark Elves if you prefer, and Marienburg. Marienburg, in fact, has nine units right by our shores. We don't know how they got here. In fact, they shouldn't be here at all, and we're going to remove them. Like a bouncer, we're going to show them the way out violently. We have only seven units total. White lines of Krace, two groups of spearmen, two groups of Lothern Sea Rangers, and one group of Silver Helms. But if we play it right, we'll be able to beat someone who outnumbers us. They have nine units total. Now, we do begin with 5,000 gold. Why don't we build over here one elven artisan? These artisans have studied their craft for many centuries. They are undisputed experts. We'll make 50 more gold per turn and we'll gain two more trinkets per turn. That is really good for trade. Over in Misnar, what do we have? One militia camp. We'll turn it over into a rally field, unlocking archers who have light armor and the Lothern Sea Guard. Now, for a commandment, we need something that will help us grow quickly. Rebuild Lost Splendor. Our buildings will be 10% cheaper and will grow a bit faster. Faster by 20 points. A dukedom of Bretonia has also declared war on us. I have no idea why. Leoness currently shares land with Musion. Musion is led by the Red Duke, who... Many of you probably know very well. I actually want the Red Duke to do well, and I'll tell you why. If the Red Duke does well, Britannia will be focused on him. They'll have no chance to declare war on me or to join in a war on me. And while we are here, why don't we check on diplomacy? Everest, hello. You are fighting Tyrion. Tyrion. Maybe we shouldn't trade. Tyrion is not a huge fan of me right now. I do not want to the anger him further. For Safari, now, would you like to trade? They would. Oh, really? Okay. That'll work out. They are defensive, meaning that they should never attack us. I hope not. What, what about Krace? You would you like to trade? Well. They would too. They're led by Corhill. Now, we've got two trade agreements. Again, Everest would potentially be a great partner. We do have a defensive alliance, but I'm not going to fight Tyrion. My job is not to fight my own people. That to me is a bad idea. We're not going to try to engage in any more trade until we find other kingdoms of Othawan. We've done most of what we need to, but there's one more thing I need to show you. Here's our fleet. We're a hybrid faction. Not only do we own land, we have ships too. Like over here, the Hawk Ship Patrol. A small squadron of Hawk Ships patrolling more than cruising. 
That means we can travel, replenish, and recruit more units. That's why our job is to tank out more important threats. We don't need to conquer the entire map. In fact, we'll probably eventually come over here to Albion, take it over, get rid of all of that corruption here, then move on and begin to raid Norska. Norska likes to raid everyone else. Well, we're going to raid them because Sea Lord Ashlyn is quite angry. He's here to bloodlet all day. And we will come over here to the Shrine of Cain. Not for what you think first of, right? The Sword of Cain? No, I don't want that. First off, it takes a long time to get to it. Secondly, we're not able to build in these lands easily. It would take way too much time. I would need to be immobile for a long period of time. I can only afford one army for right now, meaning that if I take it and try to hold it, we'll need to be here for maybe 10, 20, 30 more turns, and I don't want to do that. So instead, what I'll do, I'll come over here to help out. I'm here to help out my people. How can we do that? Well, we're going to burn down the Shrine of Cain. If we do that, other factions will have a much easier time taking over the lands that should belong to Ulthuan. They might be broken lands, but they should belong to our people. Avalorn will potentially take the Phoenix Gate. Maybe Krace will jump in too and go after Tor and Lek. But if we come over here, we could easily get the Shrine of Cain. So what we can do, we can move through the lands of Krace later after we beat Marienburg, then go over here to the Shrine of Cain. We're now making 2,000 gold that will go down later. And why don't we go into combat right now? It's about time to win a battle. We'll need to be very smart in how we play here. They have two groups of swordsmen, one group of halberdiers, three groups of free company men, one group of crossbows, and one mortar. That mortar could destroy us all. Let's find out if we can win. My sea rangers are currently being shelled, but that's intentional. They're in a loose formation and they're able to fire volleys whenever they move. They're not going to take too much damage. While their crew has been drawn out, our silver helms can charge right in. Here they come right now. Goodbye, artillery crew of Marienburg. You served your people well. Well, I can only assume. Maybe you didn't. Either way, you're dead now. Very dead. Let's go over their formation. Their infantry is way over here. Free company militiamen, halberdiers, swordsmen, and they're all led by one huntsman general. Our leader, Sea Lord Ashlyn, is waiting right over here in a grouping of trees. I thought maybe their artillery would try to shell him. They only did it like once or twice. That's when I brought in my sea rangers who were able to draw out that mortar crew. Now they're all gone. My silver helms were able to kill all 40 of them. Here's what we need to do now. Our rangers will move back. They'll continue to move up until they're in range to shoot a few of their infantrymen. They'll probably want to follow me. Now, there's only two groups who could reach my sea rangers. The huntsman general and their crossbowmen. If it wasn't for those two, I would outrange all of them completely. It's our very first battle, and I do wish that Marienburg would hold on for a longer period of time, but Generally, the Empire or Britannia conquers all of them. Which means we'll need to either fight the Empire or Britannia to gain some more land. Now, let's get ready for a new phase of our battle. Here comes a shot from their Huntsman General. Flying down right now. Oh, that's going to deal a lot of damage. There it goes. My Sea Rangers were doing fine, even being shelled by mortars. But that... That did a lot. But thankfully, they're following them. Check it out right now. Even though they're giving chase, they can't catch up. They'll begin to lose more and more men as they continue to follow. The job of my sea rangers is to lure them over to my infantrymen. My silver helms are currently waiting. If we look at the map right now, they're far back over here. They moved all the way back. My infantry is lying in wait, and those sea rangers will lure them right over into my trap. Then, later, we can have our Sea Lord charge out to fight more, too. It'll be great. But for right now, these very, very brave Sea Rangers are downing a lot of enemy humans. Check it out. They're getting shafted every time they move closer. It shouldn't take too long. I mean, we don't really have that many arrows, but they'll deal quite a bit of damage. Here's their crossbows setting off another volley. Or they were about to. Thankfully... We're able to move quickly. If we look at our speed, what? 35 speed, they have 31. So we are faster. We are just faster enough to where we can get out of their range quickly. 
And here comes a few more volleys again. There we go. They're dropping. There's not too many left, really. Now, what about my other units? Oh, here comes another shot from the Huntsman General. It didn't really do too much damage, did it? No. They've got two groups over here. Swordsmen and Free Company Militia. Our leader is charging out. Our Silver Helms are moving away. But here comes their main army. How many kills do we have? 42, 43, 39 kills, 40 kills. It's beginning to tick upwards. Oh, man. I really didn't know how I would win this battle until I looked at my C Company Rangers, or my C Rangers. That's when I said, oh boy, here we go. I can actually stick to a hit and run tactic. And it's working out very well thus far. I don't know if there's any downsides yet. I mean, if my foes have a lot of horsemen, I'll have to use my Rangers as a more traditional archer group. That will limit me quite a bit, but if they don't really have mobility, then I can use my Rangers all over the map and do what I'm doing right now. Here we go. Our infantry is charging out. The White Lions are coming. They'll later be called the White Reapers. They're here to reap. They're doing it. Oh, there we go. The charge has happened. Here comes a few more Spearmen of Kothik. That is a great fight. And while they fight, let's have a look. We have our Sea Rangers right over here with quite a few kills. We're looking at more Swordsmen and their Free Company Militia. And our Silver Helms have charged in. They have circled all the way around to attack their crossbowmen, wiping them completely out. That will eliminate every single one of their highest ranged units. And while that is happening, our Sea Lord is moving in. A bunch of Free Company Militiamen are trying to shoot him, but he tells them, no, I don't really care that much. And he beheaded a man. His very first strike, he took off a man's head. Our Sea Company Rangers are now chasing after some swordsmen. If we look over here too, we've broken a lot of their infantry. Most of my foes have now broken. We just need to give chase and finish off the rest of them. We can use our Silver Helms to chase after more too. Here's one group. Their leader is still alive. He's got 11 kills. Here they come. I'm telling you, you're about to witness a very challenging campaign. I'm going to have to move all over. I'm going to have to stay active because I'm not looking to fight my own people. That just feels wrong. The High Elves certainly do feel much more organized in their own formations using their spear walls. They're fighting that battle. Our Silver Helms are now going after their leader. Our Sea Lord has 25 kills and our Sea Rangers are moving in to attack these Free Company Militiamen. There we go. There's not too many left. There's our Sea Lord. I'm telling you, he might have a slow, slow um, start, but it, later on, he's going to be quite the juggernaut, especially when he has a Storm Dragon. He'll really begin to build things up, and it'll take time, but eventually we'll have a naval-themed force. There we go. We won the battle. They're all breaking now. We've done it. We've won the first fight. There's many more to come. We won that battle. We only lost 48. We outplayed them completely. They had no chance at all. But we will still take replenishment. There we go. 9% replenishment. Not bad at all. They're not quite completely dead yet. We killed their leader. But not all of the men are dead. We've gained one obsidian amulet. This jet black amulet is said to contain a bound gen who will deflect enemy magic. And that can be handy, especially whenever we find the Druki, they might be using magic on Sea Lord Ashland. It must be done. Now all of you get to die today. There we go. We take more replenishment and look at that. A dawn stone, even better. A precious stone that glows at the brink of every dawn. Its bearer is said to be protected by an invisible field. 15% physical resistance. Okay. Now we're at rank 3. We'll put one point into Route Marcher. We already have a default plus 10% to our campaign movement. Our other points will go over here into Hold the Line. That provides plus 5 to melee defense and plus 4 to leadership. 
Now, why don't we move back home into Mist Nar? That way we can replenish and also recruit new units. Now, you won't have to watch any intern scenes at all. I'll just be taking those right out. Let's switch over to our Dawnstone. We don't have any other items at all. So now our big goal is to build up over here in our homeland, then move on to the Shrine of Cain. Eventually, I'll have a full army. I mean, I have over 2,000 in income. We'll be more than ready to build a full army. We've gained a Herald of Mathlin, an elf whose time at sea exceeds that on land, is well versed in the Storm God's ways and knows him well. We'll have 10% less damage whenever we move through a storm. That could be handy. A little bit, not that handy, but hey. We now have a much larger army. 19 out of 20 units all filled up. Let's begin to move on now. We need to attack our enemies over here. It'll take about one more turn to make it over there, but it'll be okay. Avalorn. Oh good, they did take the Phoenix Gate. What about another town? Nope. They still have Tor Anlek, Tor Dranil, and Shrine of Cain. Tor Dranil is right over here. We've gained a few more trade treaties. Other factions have decided to trade with me. And hello, Illyrian. Why don't you want to trade? You do. Good. If we could keep a peace treaty with every faction in Ulthawan, that would be a great thing. Turnok, you're not very friendly. That's okay. I forgive you. You'll come around. All in due time. Now, I could declare ward right now, but we'll wait until I get a bit closer. I'll move here, then one more turn, I'll be ready to move on to the Shrine of Cain that will burn down. The Kalidor question. Whenever the envoys of Kalidor are at court, fractious are the proceedings. They refuse to dip their flags to the Phoenix King, choosing instead to reference Kalidor, the Conqueror, who they say earned them the right to do as they please. Their arrogance is astounding. And keep in mind, High Elves are saying that. Their insubordination infuriating, yet the order of Vol hell from Kalidor, and their magical skills must never be underestimated, nor their loyalty imperiled. We'll take remark upon their arrogance. If we do that, then we'll gain a lot more influence. That, to me, is a pretty good idea. Done. Now we have more. Okay. We're getting closer. We're not quite ready yet. We're at 19 out of 20, but we're not ready yet. We only need one more turn. The armies of the Scourge of Cain are led by Talaris Dreadbringer. Is he over here? He is. Rank 3. He's got a Death Hag. And over here, another army. Hopefully, they'll fight over here and die. Then I can move over to the Shrine of Cain. And whenever we're a bit stronger, we'll begin to go after captains all over like the stan or over here capitano right over there now we need one more turn and then we'll be ready for war let's lie and wait here and find out what they're going to do now it's time for battle at tour karali we can finally upgrade a few more buildings like our capital we can turn it into a tower a major coastal settlement the tower strikes defiantly into the sky and the elven settlement flourishes in its shade there we go. There goes much of my gold, but that is okay. We'll have another building slot in our capital. We can build a plaza to encourage more public order and income too. Now we march on the Shrine of Cain. It's going to be a pretty nasty siege battle. We had two siege towers over here and we're blocking a few shots. I wanted to move them over to one location where they had no units at all. That's right over here. And they can now support each other too. My archers will continue to exchange volleys with their dark shards. Their dark shards have a range of only 130. While they do deal 35 missile damage, if they can't even shoot at me, who cares, really? I've got 27 missile damage and we're taking some losses, but we're meant to. That will happen. My archers now are, let's see, doing pretty well. They have, what, 12 kills, 25 kills, and 3 kills. Hopefully that will go up. For the rest of my formation, we have everyone back here just waiting. My sea rangers are moving up. Here's all of my sea company's men and spearmen. I've got my horsemen way over here because they really can't do too much. That is at least distracting two of their units, which elves are very powerful, so I do want to be mindful of that. Now, these towers have landed on the wall. The white lions of Krace and our spearmen are here. We can take over, hopefully, one tower, but here they all are. And our sea lord will come join, too. Oh, there goes a bunch of Dark Shards again. But maybe now we can hit them further. 
once they get a little bit closer. Yeah, perfect. Get closer to me so I can hit you with my battle axe. Oh, they're about to cut down some Druki. There's our Sea Lord fighting right in the middle of them. So now the goal is to move over all of my infantry to where we've captured a few towers. Even if we don't hold on to those towers, they can support my advance over here, forcing all of them to move over here. It's a great plan and it usually works out pretty well. So hopefully in your own sieges, this may even help you out. Druki are quite powerful though. They are a huge threat. So hopefully I can beat them without losing too many because I don't know if they have another army. I do know that Talaris Dreadbringer is not too far away. But there we go. They're continuing to release volley after volley into their groups. And because they are all bunched up, they're easily being hit. I mean, look at that. It's beginning to work in our favor. Let's have a look over here again. Nearly 100 kills by my White Lions of Craze. I mean, they are largely fighting a bunch of Dark Shards. Back here, we have Black Ark Corsairs who have 41 weapon strength. Again, the Druki are no joke. There's a few more Dark Shards. I mean, they really pushed in. They were trying to retake their walls. These Black Ark Corsairs have killed 18. That will begin to really rise. Now it's time to break down some gates and to send in our sea companies men they can help out on the walls so far again it's working out despite really a large disparity in weapon strength the only unit i have that could really challenge any of them in a melee fight would be my white lions they do have 70 armor and now nearly 200 kills i mean these guys have been putting in the work holy crap that was a very quick swing they're getting more kills largely because my foes are breaking. When they break, oh boy, he can really collect a few Druki heads. Now that we've done that, let's go look over here. We have a few more units climbing up. It was probably a bad idea to have my Lothern Sea Guard climb up, but I thought it would be okay. They do have Black Guard Corsairs close by, 56 left total. And over here, 28 Dark Shards. When it comes to my archers, they are moving up and still releasing a few volleys. They're not getting nearly as many kills, but still. How many Dark Elves do we need to fight now? There's 530 left. We have 1,400 troops total. Getting rid of the Shrine of Cain will at least deal some manner of savage blow to Discourage of Cain. They may not be able to stay for long after losing the Shrine of Cain. That was really their big advantage. It was a walled location, but without having that, they're going to lose a lot more money and power. Here we go. They have broken in. We have over here my Lothern Sea Guard getting cut to shreds by a bunch of Black Ark Corsairs. We'll have to try to rush over here if we can. These Dark Shards are breaking. We have more units now moving in. Come on, Kothik, you can do it. The battle has been long and arduous, but we're not going to give up here. Look at how strong they are. 49 kills now. All it takes is me slipping up one time and we could lose a lot. If you ever wonder if it's too easy or not, just know that I've got to make correct choices each and every time or we could lose so many soldiers. Like over here, I made a poor choice. Will it determine the fate of my battle? Probably not. Will it determine the fate of these men, these elves here? Absolutely. They could all die because of one foolish choice I made, but now we have more soldiers moving in. So they should be okay. They're at 69 kills now. They're beginning to drop in health. Our sea lord is at over 70 kills. I mean, he is cutting some idiots down right now. Look at him go. Wait, you punched him in the gut, then slashed him? That was really cool. I've never seen that animation. I don't believe I have. That was really cool though. Now they're broken at 72 kills total. We have spearmen who broke down the gate who are now moving in. Now we just need to wait a little while. Once everyone is in position, we can move in towards their leader, a death hag. They have many deadly Druki units still. Look at what they have left. 
We have so many different foes to fight. I know that we'll be fighting Norsemen. We've already fought Marienburg. Now we're fighting Dark Elves or Druki. I'll probably call them Druki. It's a bit shorter than Dark Elves. The Asur are the High Elves. Here we go. Everyone's getting into formation now. We have some archers up here. Lurthern Sea Rangers. Now let's wait in position for our enemies to advance again. Here they come. Or maybe not. They changed their mind. I don't blame them. It's a good choice to change your mind when fighting me. What's over here? More spearmen. And they have Black Arc Corsairs, only 21. It's really that same group that killed so many of our soldiers. Let's have a look at the battle close up. Tactically, you know what I've done and what I have been doing and what my plans are. We just need to watch the remainder of the battle play out. You can really begin this campaign in any way. You don't have to do what I did. You can move down to Estalia, Talea, wherever that you really want to go. But I've got a plan here. My plan is to go after Norska. I'm not going to conquer a lot of locations. Fortunately, High Elves are very good at what is called playing tall. Playing tall means that you don't try to conquer the entire map. You specialize. You dig in deep. You begin to build up your own settlements. We can do that. So while I'm traveling around the world, I can get a lot of gold by sacking or burning things down. Then I could bring that gold back home to build up my own lands. And that's what I plan on doing. It's really one of the best ways to go after the Norskins, right? If we do that, we can burn down their lands, take their gold, bring it back, and build up. Here comes more of their blasted mounted units. These Dark Riders are dying. Fortunately, if you look over here, we've got Charge, Defense versus Large. So whenever any large attacker comes by, we can negate their charge completely. That's why we want to be still whenever we can when fighting those types of foes. Their death hag hasn't charged in yet. The spears are now getting into formation to go fight that death hag. I mean, we're not losing very many in the very beginning of our campaign, but that could change quickly. I plan on challenging myself by going after tough foes. And it could be a foolish choice. We could end up losing a battle or two. I don't know how I would feel about that, but we'll see. It's a few more volleys, some friendly fire. It looks like most of my foes have broken now, though, or are beginning to break. They have their units over here, but they really can't do much else now. So here they are. The very last of their defenses. You're in way too beautiful of a location to stay here. The Shrine of Cain will not belong to us, but we will burn it down. We will burn down everything here. No one needs to draw out that blade. We've got to keep our people safe. And to do that, we need to burn down the Shrine. At the very least, we can keep it away from all these blasted Dark Elves. Are they going to charge in? Because they should. I mean, look at all of the horsemen who died here. All the horse elves who died here. More are dropping now. We've got a few volleys coming in from the walls up above. We've hit them everywhere. They've now broken. The battle is won. We have done it. Now we can burn down the accursed Shrine of Cain. That was a fairly bloody battle, but it was only for a few groups where they were really cut into. The White Lions really dealt with a lot, but they're alive still. No one was fully wiped out. We lost 393, they lost 951. Their entire garrison is now gone. I could sack it, I could loot and occupy, but again, I don't want the Shrine of Cain. Let Avalorn or Krace have it. In fact, I would like to go back now to replenish for a few turns. Bound to Mathlin. I don't want that because it would lower my replenishment rate by 20%. Having a slow passive regeneration could potentially be handy, but not at that cost. I don't think I'll ever get it. Bowmaster, I will get. Ammunition plus 8% for archers, Lothern Sea Guard, Shadow Warriors, Shadow Walkers, Sisters of Avalorn, and Bolt Thrower units. Yeah, that sounds pretty good to me. We did run out of arrows, but now I know to carry more. We'll stay here. 
provided our allies do not take out the remainder of the Scourge of Cain. If they do, we'll move back home. We can build up our army a little bit more. And then we can move on to either fight Bretonia or the Norsemen way up north, like right over here. They've got to go too. Here's a new event, the would-be suitor. A noble prince of Valyrian presents himself before the court, offering the courtship of his eldest and certainly most beautiful daughter. It is not forbidden for the Phoenix King, once married to the Everqueen, to take additional consorts, yet to do so would send an interesting message, one that could not be easily undone. All the same, it is clear this prince wishes to curry favor, yet the entire court observes the action of the Phoenix King. What he chooses to do may have repercussions. Let's have a look over here. I could get a lot more influence. Or a follower, a priestess of Isha, immune to attrition, but I would lose 10% of my campaign movement range. That's actually much more important to me. So instead, what I'll do, deny the consort, but elevate the prince to gain more influence. There we are. Grace is coming down to help me out. I won't need to fight that rebel army led by Jim Holloway. Let's go back to town now. We can finally go back home. Once we're here, we'll continue to build things up. And Tor Everest, you're about to lose everything. I wonder, if I gave you a lot of gold, would you join me? I really feel like you won't, but if you did, that would be great for you. No? Okay. Well, they're done for. Thankfully, Tyrion likes me a lot. So now we just need to build up our public order back at home. In two more turns, we'll have a proper tower. And later, we'll probably go to the northeast. We could fight in Marienburg, or we could fight in Albion. Anything else we do really depends on what is going on. Averlorn is taking over everything. They now have Tor and Lek. They'll probably get Tor Drenil very soon. Then we won't need to worry about the Shrine of Cain. And who knows? If we really need to, we'll get a blade. A good blade to help us out. We've unlocked a new rite, the Invocation of Asurian. The creator, greatest upon the Mandala, his name alone can calm princes, tame courts, and embolden all. That's pretty good. We've also gained a Herald of Mathlin, an elf whose time at sea exceeds that on land is well versed in his storm god's ways and knows his will. Attrition down by 10% from storm attrition, not bad. Tor Everest was finally destroyed by Tyrion. They won't be here to help us out anymore, but Tyrion will be here. When it comes to Averlorn, she's been on a rampage. It just never seems to end for her. After she takes Tor Drenil, or whoever does, we shouldn't have to worry about Druki for a little while. Then we can begin to think about what we'll do. Musion has taken Bordelow. Bordelow is gone now for the most part. They do have one location left, but their public order is very low and I doubt they're making any money. <laughs> now we could go to Estalia. That is another idea. It would put me closer to the Vampire Coast Pirates, but we will see. I know there's Skaven down there too. I would probably rather go over to Marienburg to go destroy them. I know that the King of Bretonia is fighting them too, so maybe he conquered it already. It would take me a few turns to get up there. Now at rank 5, I can put a point over into Bowmaster again. Here we go, more ammo and a reload time reduction for my ranged units, letting them deal more damage in combat. Oh look at that, another incursion. Well let's go fight them. We cannot permit them to be here, and we do have a plaza over in our capital providing some public order. It's only a minor army, we don't need to fight that battle out. Another issue for me is that these high-leveled captains will probably attack me when I'm at sea. That should be a nice challenge. Oh, no, no, no. You need to go now. Be gone now. Goodbye, Gerald. Okay, let's go back into Misnar. Then on our following turn, we can begin to move away from our home. Now we can put a third point into Bowmaster, providing 20% more ammo and a further reload time reduction for all of my ranged units. Musion is currently attacking Leoness. If I were to land here, I would lose men due to attrition, but if we could burn down Leoness, that would be one less enemy for me to worry about. Not that I'm really worried. Invocation of Vol is really not too bad either, but I would rather use my Invocation of Asurian. 2,000 gold. I've got 3,427. 
We could use a new building or two. Misnar, rank three. We'll take that instead. We'll get another building slot. Here we go. Then later, we'll build up our plaza into a colonnade. Elven society thrives amongst the columns. Then later, our promenade. All right, so we haven't fought too many battles. We had two so far, but they were pretty major fights. Now we just need to get to a new location. Sea Lord Ashlyn has finally left home. Musion is besieging Leoness, and in time will probably conquer them. Musion again is doing quite well. Bordelo lost their sole remaining province or region in their province. Now they're gone. And I thought to myself, if Bretonia is doing well, and they probably are, They've already conquered a lot of what Marienburg is meant to have. Yeah, if we look at it right now, the map is telling me that Marienburg has Arnau, but not Gorsal. If they do not have Gorsal, they do not have Marienburg. What if I were to conquer the lands of Britannia from behind? Where to? That would give me a lot of money and a power too. Sure, they're rank 11 in power, but in one more turn, we're going to conquer Langi. Then later, we'll go over here to Koron. And back at home, we can use all of that newfound gold to continue improving the lives of our elves here. We're here to play tall, not wide. We're here to be selective about what we conquer. But I will turn my plaza into a colonnade, providing more gold and public order. There we go. Here's another event. You can dance at a great mask to celebrate Vol, the maker. The floor is cleared so that the Phoenix King and Everqueen may dance together. The platitudes and graciousness from the guests are unending, but afterwards, many are left wondering who the Phoenix King will bestow the honor of the second dance upon. All eyes are watching, even those of the Ever Queen. Do not dance at all. Everyone would be happy, but I would lose a bit of influence. I would rather gain more influence, or I could lose a bit of trade income for five turns and gain influence. We'll take that. I'll keep on gathering more for later, whenever I need a really good lord or hero. Marienburg, you're gone. Leoness, you're gone. Two major factions gone that are pretty close to us. That means that Bretonia did indeed wipe all of them out. Oh man. I'll be fighting Bretonians for a little bit. Here we go. We can't head right in. Not yet. I can't get any invocations as I do lack the gold, but that is okay. While we are here, we're going to build a ram. That way we can fight them in one turn. These siege battles may be bloody, but they will be worthwhile. I never would have thought that I would have ended up over here in Bretonia, but it's what I've done now. We've got to take Longi. Our sea lord is pushing a battering ram with his mind. Now that is true power. He's about to eliminate everyone just by using his brain bullets. No. On a more serious note, my units are now moving over here. All of my archers will at least eliminate a few enemies on the walls. Then we can all charge in. Over here is where I have my Silver Helms or the Swift Brothers. They'll be waiting here. They have no choice but to. I like to put them far away from my main formation. That way they draw out even one or two units away. That can help out your own siege battle dramatically because you can't really use them too much, right? You could send them towards the gate, but if there's a bunch of archers, they will die quickly. Now they're continuing to attack my sea lord. Thankfully, the battering ram is dropping a lot of it. In fact, using your lord on foot to use a battering ram is a good call. If you had units here, they would die so quickly. To me, it's better to just charge in and batter down the gate on your own than use a battering ram, unless you have a lord or hero to push it up. Now, if they do have hand gunners, you're in trouble. That might not work out, but here is all of my archers now moving up. It's a deadly battle, one of many to come. In fact, I expect a very swift reprisal from Bretonia. But here comes all of my soldiers now. We're a very organized lot and we know what we're doing, though many of these arrows are hitting the walls. It seems like we've gotten quite a few kills. That'll only rise and rise and rise if we can break a few of them or even shoot many of their horsemen from behind the walls. That would be even better. I can hear the ladders now clunking as they hit the walls. My soldiers are about to climb up here and fight hard. Look at how many dead Bretonians are lying down now. They're just strewn all about. We've killed so many. The Sea Lord Ashland is not here. 
to show mercy. He's here to kill so many of them. Oh, look at that. They're just dropping. Here comes our own C Company soldiers and other units too. There's not a lot of them. Back here is where we have the Knights of the Realm. But if we can target those volleys to arc right behind the walls, we can kill them too. Under a few sustained volleys, they'll begin to drop. Over here is where the battering ram can again quickly break down a gate. Doing what? 10% damage to the gate per hit. There we go. We have one more hit now. Now it's broken. The battering ram too. Our sea lord is not going to move in yet. That's okay. On the walls, our soldiers are still taking them. They have a few units who have retreated, but have come back. They've rallied back up. Oh, don't worry. They'll be getting a taste of our might too. It's coffee flavored. Coffee flavored might. No, our sea lord is not going to move in yet. It's not time. But all of these infantrymen could. No, I did move them up because we control two towers. So we don't need to worry about dealing with any of those ranged attacks from those towers. Here we have our C Company group. They've killed 10. These bowmen are still moving around trying to get away or trying to engage in the fight at the very least. They do have foot squires, but they too couldn't do too much. I think my volley's got them. Here come some more mustaches. They're coming with might and cheese and wine. Oh, they don't all have shoes. Let's have a look. The walls have largely been taken. Now these archers can target those who are behind the walls. You can see what I'm targeting right now. I've brought in my white lions of craze to help out our sea lord while the sea lord challenges a paladin to a duel. These two get to fight in shrubbery. Fortunately, their paladin does not talk about knee. The white lions are still charged again, chasing after a group of spearmen with shields. They're going to be brought down too. 40 weapon strength and they have armor piercing. Our own lord is still fighting that paladin. It looks like it's pretty equal right now. Let's go check on other parts of our battle. We're still taking the walls. They haven't quite fully broken yet. There's still a few more minute arms. The white lions are still charging in. We've got more spearmen over here and peasant bowmen who are coming in. When it comes to our sea lord, most of our... Oh yeah, check it out. It's still pretty close. It looks like he's beginning to win the duel. The paladin probably wants to leave. He's like, you know what? I've had plenty. Thank you. I'll be okay. Oh, come on. You can take him down. Don't let him go. And he's dead. The sea lord has done it. Okay, let's go back to what's left of this battlefield. The White Lions have killed over 20. We have spearmen moving in. We have a few archers who are still releasing and hitting them with a few volleys. There's not too many left. The White Lions or the White Reapers are going to clean house today. By part two, we'll have more unique units, but for part one, We'll have to use a very cheap army, which might not work in my favor as we fight more challenging foes like Bretonia. Bretonia is actually quite a challenge to fight because of their many knights. If they have flying knights, if they have a flying lord, we're in trouble. A flying lord could destroy hundreds of my men, of my elves. The sea company, oh man, they lost a lot on the walls, but you can see all the bodies too. We dealt a lot of damage. Now we have more units who are getting into formation. All of our foes have now broken. We've won the battle. They're trying to get out of here. Langi has been taken. We'll need a good name for this location. Let me know down below if you have a good name for it. Anyway, let's move on. I know that there's been word of the king coming to attack. He's bringing a much larger army. We may be in trouble. I'm not too happy about this battle. The king has come. He's brought a very large army with him. We could lose a major fight. If we lose here, we lose our entire army. It'll take time to rebuild. We could always come back. But here they have many peasant bowmen. They have a lord too, who's mounted. Peasant mobs, we're looking over here at the Knights of the Lionhearted, a regiment of renown. They're also very strong. And then you have over here the king. The king himself, 
my god, he's a juggernaut. 135 armor, 80 melee attack, magical and flaming attacks. I really did not want to fight him. I thought maybe he would be far away, but he was actually close to his home. My formation is over here. I have my C Company soldiers right in the middle, right behind. I have my archers on my flanks. I've got my spearmen and my Lothran Sea Guardsmen. Back here, I've got my Silver Helms and my White Lions of Kreis. We just need to wait for a bit of time. We fought one battle already in Longi. Now we've got to fight here. Fortunately, our archers should be able to beat theirs. Peasant Bowmen shouldn't be able to beat Elven Bowmen. We moved up just a little bit. That way my archers would be in range. Here comes one charge from an enemy lord. They're coming right now after my lord, the Sea Lord Ashlyn. Our units are now moving in just a bit. You can see that my elven archers are winning so far when it comes to the ranged exchanges. Oh, we're much better at shafting. If we zoom out a bit, we can see where they're all moving. They have many mounted units who are on my flanks, like over here. We have so many knights of the realm who are charging in, fighting my silver helms and my spearmen. We'll need to rebut that attack or refute that attack. Oh, and over here we have a few more soldiers moving in, men at arms who are also trying to encircle my units. My Lizard Sea Rangers are having to move back. We're still attacking more knights who are close by. We still have spearmen who are trying to hold and wait here. Their peasant bowmen have largely fallen, and now we're just fighting these blobs of men in addition to their leadership too, like that lord who's mounted and also the king, Luan Lianke. We have two groups of spearmen and silver helms fighting together against a group of knights errant. And over here, we have more Knights Errant. I thought they were Knights of the Realm, but they're Knights Errant. So not nearly as powerful, thankfully. Our Lothran Sea Guard are now moving over to the right flank, where we can then shoot at a peasant mob and hopefully break them soon. Over here is their king, Luwin. Luwin has already struck down many of my White Lions and crazy I me. Mean, these are my elite infantrymen who are unable to really phase him. He doesn't really care. When it comes over here to the left flank, they have more knights now charging in. I've got to address that problem by getting a few more spearmen over here and also allow my archers to hit them. They need to die, and they need to die quickly. Oh, spearmen, you're at 21 kills. Back here, we have 14 kills for one of their mounted lords. If we look at the battle right now, we can see where all of my units are at. Over here, my two spearmen and silver helms are still trying to fight these knights errant who have 42 kills. Back here, we have more knights errant who are moving around, hoping to help them out. I've got some spearmen chasing after them. Here, we had a big blob all fighting together. I've brought in some more spearmen to counter their knights of the lion hearted. Over on the front lines, we're still trying to struggle and hold and stay alive. Their king has killed how many now? I don't even want to really look at it, but he's at nearly 100 kills. My white lions are being wiped out, and my sea company men are trying to move back to help them out. My archers are still challenging anyone who's coming back. Their archers and infantry who are coming back are being met by more volleys, so at the very least we can beat their armies, if not their lords. Here comes another charge from Knights Errant. Spearmen are still challenging all of them. It's been a very short battle, but you can see how deadly it is. We didn't lose that many in our previous fights, but here we're losing so many. Our Silver Helms are now moving back. The King is fully healed up. He has a potion of healing. But not only that, I believe he's regenerating too. He's way too strong for me to really stop. I've got to break his army then. These Knights of the Lionhearted, if they weren't here, so many more of my elves would be alive. We're trying to focus our volleys on them. It's working out right now. Hopefully soon they'll break. You can see all the bodies all over the battlefield. It's been a very long ordeal. And we're still holding because we have so much leadership. At the very least, we are hard to break, even though our numbers are not very high. We zoom out real quick and look at the battle. Most of their units have been broken. These two groups of spearmen are still trying to challenge two groups of horsemen. What else is going on? Their king is at over 100 kills, and again, barely any damage has been taken at all. He's able to solo a majority of my army on his own. If he has a flying mount, again, I'm in trouble. These men at arms are now beginning to fall apart. We have more spearmen on the front lines who are going to be charging out. And we also have a lord. He's at 46 kills. The Lothran Sea Guard, fortunately, are pretty decent in melee. They'll maybe be okay. But there they are. And we're nearly done now. These knights errant are beginning to break. Look at 
Let's see. We've got the king, who again is still getting kills. He just will not stop killing everyone. I mean, look at that. He's surrounded, but he doesn't care. He's very angry that I'm coming after his people. King and country, he says. Everyone else has been broken. Anyone who comes back will just be shot up. So we're just going to be here for a little while, fighting him until he's finally ready to leave us alone. I mean, look at that. My own lord is quite damaged. And there's very little that I'm able to do. You can see how many elves he's taken out on his own. I mean, these were all just fighting him alone. There's even blood coming out of the sky. How many people have been dismembered? Okay, let's go have a look at his damage. Barely any damage still. He's at nearly 200 kills. We managed to kill their lord. That's really how I thought the battle would go. But we haven't done that yet. 188 kills. It only took 20 years to finally break him, but he broke. Let's have a look at his kills real quick. 253 kills. Look at the damage he took. He didn't take a lot of damage. But thankfully, he's leaving right now after killing 253 elves. I mean, all of this over here was due to him. But the battle is over. We've defeated his army. Boy, I don't want to do that again. King Lewin, I'm going to take your lands, but... I need you to go. After winning those two difficult battles back to back, we now have some new skills to pick up. I've already picked up over here, Master of the Mist, making full use of the magic mist summoned by his mages. Sea Lord Ashlyn is keen on leading shrewd surprise tactics against the enemy, providing stock for all of my naval units who are rank four and above, 5% more speed for all units, and Vanguard deployment too. We'll also pick up over here, Red Mist. There we go. I want all of my naval units to become more powerful in combat. We'll be getting more as we continue to upgrade our fleet. Now, why don't we come over here and begin attacking what's left of our enemies? Like you. I've already beaten your people. Let's take forced labor. Because I did pick up that right, and I've got my new fleet buildings too, my replenishment is very high. I've been able to really heal up so very quickly. That's going to allow me to move on to a new battlefield without having to wait for too long. Like right now, I could go to Koron. The Signs of Mathlin. Ah, I see. Okay. Defenders of Kothik and chosen by the Lord of the Deeps himself. I should take him. How much? 176 gold total. All right. What do you have as a special effect? 8% damage resistance for allies in range. Okay. That'll really help a lot. Now at rank 10, we can pick up Dedicated to Mathlin. Plus 3 to melee defense, plus 5 to leadership for my Lothern Sea Guard units. And they're cheaper too by 5% for their upkeep. Every port that I have will gain more income by 1%. I can get a Storm Dragon later, but that's way later. For now, I should probably pick up my new mount over here. A Swift Feather Rock. But before I do that, let's pick up my dedicated to Mathlin. As the Lord of the Sea, Mathlin is patron to sailors and explorers. He is prayed to by elves about to embark on a voyage or seeking new lands. And for you, I'm going to put a point over here into replenish troops again. And weapon master. There we go. All right. We can go now. If I go now, the garrison is big. But not too big. I've got the numbers, I think. Oh, there you are, King. I was wondering where you went off to. You're rank 15. No wonder you're so powerful. I don't want to have to fight him again. I know I will need to, but my God, he's difficult to beat. And over here, we'll take naval discipline. We now have militia training. We're gaining a lot of technology. We do have a lot of gold. Why don't we spend some back at home? They are pretty unhappy. Okay. I'll build for you a promenade. You'll be a lot happier after that. Then we can build our watchtower. Yeah, I want to make sure that we have a good garrison back at home. Most astute. Now let's get ready for a new battle. Unfortunately for my elves, the king has a flying mount now. His hippogriff is about to tear right through my army. I don't believe we're going to be able to get very far. Our sea lord was at full health, but no longer. He's been brought down pretty fast and only two hits too. That means we've got to focus on defeating his army. 
I've tried to rush on my army over here to where we could fight them over the water where their units will slow down in movement, allowing my archers more of a time to destroy them. Their Pegasus Knights are moving in. They have how many groups total? Only two. We're looking at what? Knights of the Realm. We've got Knights Errant and their General Infantry Army. Their Infantry I can beat. Their Lord I cannot. Oh, they have a filled trebuchet. Okay, now that we're back here, here's my formation. Again, the goal is to slow down all of them in the water. I've been trying to bind down the king, but he's at 40 kills. Here comes a bunch of Pegasus Knights now charging in to help out their king. They'll be slaying so many of my elves in this battle. No, the only thing I can do is to try to bind him down to keep him from charging in again. Dealing with his melee attacks is quite rough, but dealing with a charge from him is much worse. Here comes the Pegasus Knights. Thankfully, they're a bit more fragile, even though they can deal a lot of damage. If we could just make them break, we could then shoot them up. Then, we no longer need to worry about them. Here comes more. Spearmen up here are going to hold position and wait. The knights are now charging in, but again, we're able to negate their charge bonus. My C Company's men cannot, but I have more units to help them out. Here we go. These volleys are beginning to damage their horsemen. Then we can begin to go after other archers and other units who are back here who are now moving into the battle. You can see what's happening right now. Their king is chasing my sea rangers. We're still breaking many of their Pegasus knights. And there's only so many left. There's not too many left, at least behind my lines. When it comes to the front lines, oh yeah, we've got another army to fight. Don't worry about me, I'm sure we'll be okay. Not all of us, but a few of us will make it out of here alive. We just need to beat him so bad to where he'll want a peace treaty. If we can have that, then maybe we'll be okay. There we go. You can see my archers are beginning to hit their archers, and we've broken those Pegasus Knights again. Here comes more of them. Moving to my front lines, my spearmen are holding. They're not going to break today. They're doing well. They're not here to break today. We go look at where the king is at. He's still all bound down at 74 kills. Back over here on the left flank, we're looking at more knights errant who will come after my Lothern Sea Rangers. I doubt they'll be able to do too much. These Lothern Sea Guardsmen are over here too, waiting on the left flank, ready to block any type of charge. Here they come right now. They're charging in, but we do have our spears ready to go. Bows and spears, hand in hand. A lot of their infantry is taking a lot of damage. Our Lord, our Sea Lord, I brought him to the middle of their formation. That way... He can just fight them. He won't be able to beat the king. Not right now. But he's still fighting a bunch of infantry. And holding them back. Their archers have already been broken. Their trebuchet, I don't know what it's been doing. It's just been waiting back there. I've never seen that. Over here on my right flank, we have their king, who's charged in again at over 100 kills. Our noble, the High Warden Lavendil, is attempting to challenge him. If he does well, that's great. If he does not, I don't know what to do about that. My Silver Helms have moved in. The Swift Brothers are still attacking. What do we have over here? Lothar and Sea Rangers who are still alive. Many of their units have broken. We no longer need to worry about them. There's only one large group left on the front lines and if we maintain every single volley into that mass, they'll break quickly, then they'll be gone. Then we'll only need to worry about their king, Luan Lianca, who again is devastating my formations. Now, will they finally break? They are beginning to break. Our Sea Lord is at 39 kills. We'll get revenge on the King one day whenever we have a Storm Dragon. I'm angered by how many he's killed on his own. He's now at 145 kills. That's only going up. Anytime I say he's at X amount of kills, it only goes up. Here's a few more Knights of the Realm. Most of their army is now defeated. They are beginning to break. Over here, we have one Paladin that we've got to kill. He's gotten, what, 15 kills total? There's a little bit of friendly fire. We're shooting him the hell up. I've always got to be mindful of all that friendly fire. But it just sort of happens sometimes whenever you're busy trying to manage every part of your battlefield. But most of their army is now broken. We have our Silver Helms who are charging out, going after enemy archers and other units who are trying to get away. They can't really hold up for too long. I don't think we have too many more to worry about. Here they come. More peasant bowmen are going flying. The Yeeting Power of the Elven Horseman. 
is quite extensive. You can see where the battle took place now. The aftermath, pure carnage. Many more bodies have sunk to the bottom of the water. That paladin is now fleeing. He's at 949 health. We just need to break their king now, King Luen. The rest of their army, even if they come back, they'll just break after we chase all of them away. And we have finally won. Now that we have Caron, we can loot and occupy it. They're not elven. I feel more than fine taking their wares and bringing it back home. We own a new province. A very powerful yes, one, sir, too. It's trouble. at tier two, but I've got four building slots already. Elven Gardens, I could use over here what then? Probably rebuild Lost Splendor. That may change later, but for now, that's what I want. Reaver Patrols, I'll probably change to that in like one or two turns once I begin to navigate through all of my buildings. You're tier three, but I'll keep you here for right now, Rally Field. We've got a Pottery Maker. And over here, Grazing Meadows for a few Illyrian Reavers. They're pretty handy. Elven Gardens, I do not need. We'll destroy that. Well, it does go up to tier four, so I'll keep one over in our capital, but not over here in Langi. We need to rename these locations too. We'll have to get some really good names. There goes all of my gold now. My God, I made a lot. I mean, I fought a lot of battles. I looted. We could spend all of that back at home. We'll be making a lot more money in a few more turns. And for Sea Lord Ashland, what am I going to give you now? Tide of Ithilmar? No. Sea Lord? Maybe so. The Pernicious? Or over here, Royal Approval. If I get that, I'll gain one influence per turn. My upkeep will go down. My White Lions will become more powerful. Plus eight to melee attack and melee defense. You know what? Let's do that. I could use a bit more influence. That'll work out. There we are. I haven't grown yet in my fleet to build a new building for my fleet or a new ship in my fleet. I could use more units. We're pretty beat up. I mean, we had a big fight. Now, what we can do, we can wait for them while we begin to patch back up. We can fight them, then move on. Their king is going to be a nightmare to be, though. I don't know how we're really going to counter him. He's able to solo a majority of my units on his own, despite us having anti-large spears. So we'll have to figure that out because it'll take me a bit to get more elite units. It's not a quick endeavor, especially because I might need to go back home. And global recruitment is not cheap. Unlike the AI, we only have a finite amount of funds. So our challenges have only just begun. Or maybe they'll want a peace treaty. If they do, I'll be okay with that. They took over Marienburg. We could get it later. Or we can have a peace treaty now. Go fight the Norsemen. Then later come back after their king. But if we fight him anymore, we could end up losing a battle or two because of how powerful he is. And not only that, I would rather keep him alive if we do manage to get a peace treaty, and I'll tell you why. The Empire might want to fight them. If they do, then I can join in. But for right now, we have new lands. We own Kothik, and over here, Northern Bretonia. I'm sure they're angry, but Musion is doing well, and I doubt Musion will want to fight me because he's got other Bretonians to fight. We'll find out, though. High Warden Lavendil, our noble, our hero in our army, has gone up to rank 4, and he's gained a new follower, Food Taster. Unless the poison is slow acting, his employer's life will be preserved by the forfeit of his own, according to Assyrian's will. Enemy heroes will have a lesser chance to succeed against him, minus 10% to their chances. Now, Bretonia did indeed want a peace treaty. It's kind of like when Marienburg left the Empire. The Empire tried to fight for them to come back. They got a bloody nose, and Marienburg has been able to be their own political entity until now. Now Bretonia has relocated. Well, not all of Bretonia, but Koron. The king has relocated to Marienburg. He might be making more gold now. Hopefully he'll need to fight the empire, that way they can leave me alone too. While that is going on, why don't we head over here to Albion? We can do that. We could colonize the Isle of Wight. We could then take Conquata and begin to fight Norsemen. Eventually I'll have new units, but right now... We have one new group of Illyrian Reavers. At rank 4, I'm going to put a point over into what? Speed of Asurian for 1? Hard to hit? Yeah. You took a lump, man. King Lewin beat the crap out of him. It was pretty rough. Research available. Okay, let's go pick up a point C Masters. Or actually, 
Barding for my Illyrian Reavers. Barding of this kind gives the Reaver mounts extra protection whilst they deliver their devastating charges. There we are. I'll probably need more units later. We're still building up back here, though we do have some public order. And a lot more gold too, by the way. We're now making over 2,000, or sorry, not 2,000, 1,500 gold per turn. I was hoping for 2,000. I was reading my army upkeep. That's why early on I do like to use a cheap army. We've only fought in so many battles, but pretty soon I'll need to upgrade. Oh, you could attack me too. You're very close. Yeah, hopefully she doesn't do that. If we come over here to Albion, the corruption is quite high. We'll need Conquata. Here's a new event. The Seneschal of the Court controls the flow of information to and from the Phoenix King. He is, therefore, an important figure with great power. It is discovered that the Seneschal has been choosing which information reaches the court in order to maintain his power and reduce that of others. It is a shrewd tactic, but courtiers are only as smart as the secrets they hide. Once exposed, they are powerless. The steward has been making some bad choices. Okay, we'll pay him off. We'll gain 15 more influence. I'll keep on gaining more and more until we can get some really good lords or agents. Now that we're here, why don't we go after Conquata? Or we could take our time. None shall live. Yeah, that'll work out. Time to colonize. Protector. Here we go. We now have a new location under our command. Another elven hamlet. Albion will belong to the elves. Who are you? A rebellion, you say? In my lands? I cannot permit that. Yeah, we'll take care of it later. Now over here in Coron, we could use some really good stuff like a plaza. Again, we need more public order everywhere. We do, right now, have our invocation of Asaurian providing more influence per turn, cheaper buildings, and more public order. We're now fighting the Norsemen over here in Albion. Let's have a look at what we need to do to beat them. We need to try to endure their initial charges. We can use our archers to pepper them and eventually bring them all down. I have my Leathern Sea Guard right behind my infantry. Here comes a fireball from them. I just heard it go off. I've got my horsemen over here on the right hill, and they should be all right. Our noble was hit. The High Warden Lavendil took a lot of damage. Behind my Leathern Sea Guard, I've got all of my archers. Four companies total, called the Black Rain. But here they come now. If our mounted units can destroy their chariot, it'll put me at ease. I'm more worried about their trolls than anything else. I mean, if they're really allowed to stay in a fight, they can get a lot of kills too. But here it comes right now. They're moving in. Another fireball that actually hit our leader, Sea Lord Ashlyn. Oh, it did deal a bit of damage to him as well. But I do believe with all of my many arrows, we're going to be able to defeat them after a short period of time. It won't be like fighting Bretonians who have all of those blasted mounted units. Here they go. They charged in towards our leadership. Their infantry are now moving in. You can see where all of my units are currently waiting. We've got a few spearmen who are held in reserve. Their ice trolls are now running away. And here comes another fireball. Our horsemen have moved in, going after that chariot group. They're now beginning to waver. Eventually, they will break. If we look at what's left, there's not too many left. We've got some great weapons that are now charging in. They're going to deal a lot of damage. But again, if we could just beat them back and focus all of our volleys on them, we'll be okay. Over here, we have our Scions of Mathlin. Aura of Protection, 8% damage resistance. Very nice to have in a battle like the one we're in right now. They're using some more magic on our units. Look at that. Spirit Leech. But on a C Company, not a great call. That's meant to be for one individual unit combatant. Marauder Champions are very strong. They can easily defeat our Spearmen, but thankfully, again, they're not only fighting our Spearmen. They're fighting Archers, too. The White Lions of Crazy are still fighting. Let's zoom out real quick to check out the battle. Right now, my mounted units are moving all over the map, keeping away from these Spearmen. We can shoot the Spearmen later. They have more units moving back in. These Ice Trolls are moving back in, too. We're just trying to hold back every single charge by them, and so far, we've been able to hold just fine. 23 kills, 24 kills over here, 13 kills by that group, and Sea Lord Ashlyn. He's low on health, but he's still fighting. He has not given up yet. These trolls are now breaking. You can see how few infantrymen they have left. Our mounted units are moving in right behind them. 
They're beginning to bob and weave right through their ranks and they're about to hit their spellcasters too. If we can kill their spellcasters, we'll be okay. And here we are. Blinking the Marauder Champions, causing all of them to break. We have them completely surrounded. Now we can keep our infantry back while we continue to shoot them. There goes another charge from my mounted units, hitting them from behind and routing them. We'll be able to get a few kills. I'll probably try to focus on our spellcasters in case we need to auto-resolve afterwards. The battle's over. They've all broken. We've won our battles. We've done it, everyone. We've got a lot more Norsemen to fight, but that'll learn them a good lesson or two. It was my first time playing as the High Elves fighting Norsemen early on. They were quite challenging. I mean, we were fighting a lot of Marauder Champions, but we won. We lost only 384. They lost, well, their entire army. We've got a lot more to fight. Why don't we loot and occupy? We're here to stay, but I would like the gold. A Talisman of Protection. We can give it over to High Warden Lavendale. Here we go. We'll give you Replenish. Now it won't take nearly as long to fully heal our army. That means we only have one more location to conquer. Then we could patch up more and head over here to pick up a lot of gold. It won't be an easy battle, but it would provide a lot of gold. Here we go, city tunnels. We'll take that. We want to make sure that we're not dealing with too much public order issues due to the high corruption inherent here. And we can repair the Capitol building too. It's not cheap, but that's all right. Fortunately, it looks like we can live in every location here without any issues at all. Good. It's a suitable climate for us. Why don't we move over here? We could take an elven embassy to unlock more technology. I'll take up my plaza. What more do we need? Shrine of Asurian would unlock more technology, but also get rid of more corruption. Not a bad idea. We'll do that instead. And later we'll build up our Elven Forge because I would like some artillery or even a chariot or two would be great. We're still trying to keep the peace here. It'll take time. Yeah, we'll take more replenishment. Goodbye. Why don't we go back into Conquata? We can patch up for one turn, then move over here to the Citadel of Lead. And after that, all of that corruption from Chaos should begin to plummet, hopefully. We've got our Shrine of Asurian helping that out. Unlocking even more technology too, which I'm very excited about. But we'll check that out in just a little while. Now, Mathlin's Landing. You're currently in Elven Hamlet. I can turn you into a village right away. We'll do that. What about over here in Koron? They're not very happy, but the location is finally ranked up to level 3. Now, I could get more public order. I should get more public order. Here we go. Here's one promenade. Now, what's over here? I think I might use Koron right now to make more money. Yeah, I mean, it's only 660 gold. I gain 100 gold per turn in addition to trade goods, which again, helped me make more money. But let's get ready now for a new battle. Oh, who ranked up? You did, good, rank 14, all right. I'll give to you Herald of Mathlin. They say Ashlyn is being kept safe by Mathlin himself, to the point that even when defeated, he might just wash ashore as if nothing happened. So, wound recovery time down by one. Passive ability, Herald of Mathlin. All right. So, he'll begin to heal up. Not bad. Whenever he's lower than 20% of his health, anyway. He'll gain more vigor, too, meaning that he will not tire out. Or if he is tired, he won't be tired anymore. We've picked up Panoply of the Merlord. Plus 20 to armor, 8% physical resistance, all of that good stuff. So now he's pretty durable. 90 armor, not that high, a decent leadership. His melee attack is very high though. That part is very good. Yeah, after we get a few more skills for all of his units, we'll begin to move over here to his own personal combat capabilities. But for now, let's get ready to attack that one citadel. There's another uprising over here in Koron. Hopefully some faction will attack them. If not, I'm sure we'll be able to deal with it later. Grone, you're not very happy, are you? I would like for you to get to tier 5 quickly. That would really help me out. Anyway, let's go look over here. I've got my main army led by our sea lord. And we can now head to the Citadel of Lead. 
There's still a lot of corruption here, but again, whenever they don't have any buildings or people here, it'll begin to go down quickly. Time to once again loot and occupy. I'm not here to be that friendly. Okay, we can repair our elven village that we built so very quickly. We can build up our outpost garrison too. There we are. And what do we want over here? More public order? For now, that might be my best choice. Yeah, we'll do that instead. We need more public order. We've gained a new talisman, a pigeon plucker pendant, providing minus five to melee attack for any flying unit. Okay. Anyway, we now own all of Albion. Yeah, we need to get rid of more corruption. We'll take Banish Corruption. We'll need new names for Conquata and Citadel of Lead. After we begin to subjugate here and we build up our own fleet, we've got a few buildings to upgrade. Our growth is currently pretty high. Then we can begin to move on to other parts of Norska. I guess we'll find out. Anyway, let's have a look. Ashlyn, what do you need now? More melee attack? No, again, we're not going to get that. Maybe later. Time for you to take up your flying mount. Sure, you might not need it later. Or I could be patient. I mean, in three levels, I'll be able to get my storm dragon. Once I have my storm dragon, I will not be worried. Oh man, we're going to kill so many people. Then I'll be ready to go fight the king of Bretonia. All right, for now, why don't we take up veterans of the Brine Dragon? Only the best on Ashland's flagship, able to infiltrate, form up, kill everything, and sell back at affluent bloody motion. Plus six to melee attack and missile damage for Leathern Sea Guard. Let's see, Swift Feathered Riders and Eagle Claw Bolt Throwers too. Interesting to provide them melee attack, but all right. <laughs> there we go. Okay, High Warden Lavendil. I could give you a steed that would provide you a lot more armor, a bit more health. Sure. But instead, I want you to fight with my ground troops. I'll give you hard to hit. Plus 12 to melee defense. Okay. We're about to have a big rebellion again. But that will only let me train up before I need to move on. And we'll even have a different army by the time we get to part 2. I'll be able to exchange a few of my units. Oh, who's over here? Hard Ganeth? The crone is coming, and she's rank 16. Man, they're all getting very powerful. Yeah, if you don't mind, beat her. Don't let her conquer my lands over here. So why don't we have a look at what is going on? Ulthawan is doing well. In fact, they're conquering lands over to the northwest. When it comes to Bretonia, Musion is doing very well. They've conquered many locations. And they're going to be a huge threat. I'll need to try to diminish any type of corruption back in our capital, which thankfully there's none. I don't know why there's none, but I guess they don't really have like any buildings or agents to really stop me. We'll need to subjugate these people over here in Northern Bretonia. My job is to potentially go kill more Norsemen. I won't hold any one location. In fact, I'm going to burn them down. Hopefully other factions will go fight them. Then what we could do... And you can let me know what you think. We could then go fight more Norsemen up north over here. Or we could go fight the Druki. And begin to take over locations to the west. Now here's another option. I mean there's a lot that we can do. Because I'm able to move so quickly over the water. I could sail all the way down. Take Estalia. Talea. Maybe even go after the Border Princes. But Sartosa is another target. Then you have Vampire Coast Pirates who are a little bit further down too. Like over here and over here. We can really go anywhere. So down below, if you want to let me know what you think I should do, then let me know. And for all of you who have been watching, thank you for watching. Do leave a like down below and look forward to more tomorrow. In fact, right now we're going to upgrade these into what? Stone walls? Yeah. The cold, unfilling stone cares not for friend or foe and will repel invasion all the same. So we'll get better bolt throwers on our towers. We'll get some more archers. And what else will we get? Army ability channeling spire. Not bad. That'll work out nicely. Okay, until then everyone, I shall see you tomorrow and look forward to much more.